The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Good day once again. <clears throat> my name is Richard Aguiar, the Director of Emergency Management and Chief of Special Services. My guest today is Mr. Alan Phillips. He is the Regional Manager for MEMA. Uh, Mr. Phillips, um, give me a little history of yourself. When did you start with MEMA and so forth? All right, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, well, I've st I started with MEMA about 18 years ago, mm -hmm. and I've worked with in different various roles, and currently I'm the uh, MEMA East Regional Manager. A little bit about the way we're set up is that we have headquarters and we have multiple uh, regional offices. We have two in MEMA East and one in MEMA West, and I oversee MEMA East and the six local coordinators assigned to those offices. Which is a lot of work. It is a lot of a work, lot of yes. Yeah. So let's talk about um, the premise of MEMA and what the role that they perform for the city and towns in our area. Sure. So MEMA is the uh, state agency that's charged with assisting the communities in responding to and recovering from disasters, uh, whether it's man-made or natural disaster uh, is irrelevant to us. So if you have a need as a community, we're here to assist you in uh, getting your community back to whole following that event. And I have to say, um, being the EMD for Fall River, um, every time I reach out to MEMA, particularly uh, coordinator, um, mm -hmm. happens to be Nath yes. uh, Cratchit, um, he's a great asset, and so is Mima. When we need certain certain things from you guys, you're always there to help us. Yes, thank you. And, and, and I, you know, and I don't think a lot of people um, understand what the role of the EMD is, the Emergency Management Director. Yeah. Um, I know what my role is, and I think people struggle to understand what is the role. They know what the fire chief does, they know what the police chief does, and right in that same category, you have the EMD, the Director of Emergency Management. So can you explain to our listening audience also what our roles are as EMDs, what yes. my role is? Yeah, as an EMD, uh, basically you, you have the same charge we have as a state, mm -hmm. and that's making sure that the citizens of Fall River are number one safe, and that they can respond to and prepare for these different types of disasters. You know, that can include a host of things. Um, it starts with a planning effort and putting together a SEMP plan, a comprehensive emergency management plan. Uh, and then from there, it goes into responding to these disasters and making sure that Fall River has everything it needs to uh, bring its uh, uh, city back to a normal state. So, you know, in the SEMP plan, as we all know, it's, uh, we have special institutions in the SEMP plan. Mm -hmm. And for we have, of course, like everywhere else, daycare centers, nursing homes, schools, private daycare centers and private homes. Mm -hmm. um, so when I look at the East Sam plan, um, not everybody has an East Sam plan. Yeah. So what I did was I coordinated um, and I broke down for each individual school daycare center. And it's in a pamphlet such as this, what their e evacuation destination point is. Mm -hmm. and what they have to do in the event of an emergency, uh, who to contact, so forth, so on. So we tailor that to each institution that we have in the, in the city. Um, it's timely, it takes a lot of work, mm -hmm. but once you have the template on the computer, um, it's a lot easy. Um, but I think this is a service that um, we should provide to our citizens as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that brings me now to the next question. Um, so we spoke about some of the resources. Now what are some of the resources so if we have a major catastrophe within the city, um, what are some of the major resources that we could call MEMA for? Okay, so even pre-disaster, mm -hmm. uh, we have resources available. Uh, some of those resources include training. Uh, we have a robust training department, and we put on different classes for public safety entities, whether it's police, fire, EMS, health is irrelevant. Uh, it's for all public safety. So we'll do a lot of training. Uh, we'll help with planning 
uh, such as the uh, uh, SEMP plan, the Comprehensive mm -hmm. Emergency Management Plan that we referenced. Um, and you know, there's a host of additional pre-disaster. Once a disaster has happened, uh, we'll come in and we'll help you kind of get a uh, understanding of what happened, uh, what the costs are, you know, how many uh, miles of roadways were uh, destroyed, et cetera, and we'll, we'll assist you with doing your paperwork, et cetera, so that once that goes to FEMA, they have all the knowledge they need to declare a, a disaster. In 2010, we had major flooding in Fall River, mm -hmm. and um, it was just in Fall River, so <clears throat> Doug Falls, the legend, yeah, I remember Doug well. <laughs> he um, came down with FEMA and they assessed the damage. We probably had somewhere around $3 million damage in Florida with streets that caved in, um, basements flooded. And because it was just, Kate, the disaster was within Fall River, we could not apply for federal um, mm -hmm. disaster help. So small business came in and they did help these people at 1% or 2%. On right. Reimbursement. Low, low interest. Low interest yeah. loan. So I do know um, when we had that flood, uh, we had people that were trapped around what type of pond the water was, you know, five feet, six feet high in some areas. So through Doug, through MEMA, mm -hmm. Region 2, uh, we contacted the National Guard mm -hmm. and um, they came down and they <clears throat> brought um, vehicles to to remove the people from the flooded areas. So that's a great resource that we have through MEMA. And um, just like if we have major communications, we can use the communications. Right. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of good resources right. through MEMA that people don't really realize. I think when people look at the Red Cross, they do a lot of stuff with disasters. They're really, really well known what they do. But when you talk about MEMA, it's like, home, everybody says, oh, Homeland Security. Well, it's, that's two different entities. Yes, it is. And I think um, people don't totally understand what MEMA actually does. And MEMA is the voice between each city and town. Right. It's a communication, and it's our way of getting help from the state. And Chief, if I can tag onto that. So if, if we think about a disaster, and we look at what I call the lifeline of a resource request. so. Say Fall River has a disaster, let's, let's re use the uh, flooding you referenced in 2010, and when it taxes the local community and it's above their ability to respond or their resources are all used up on you know, other areas of the city, you can make that request through MEMA. And what we do is we have all of the other uh, state entities at our disposal to assist with that. So if it's an issue of crowd control or it's an issue of traffic control points, we have different uh, resources we can provide to help cover that. If it's um, rescue equipment, uh, boats, et cetera, uh, maybe it's sign boards or light towers, whatever the case may be, we have available either on our, on our own or through other state agencies that we can get them. We also do a lot of mutual aid. Yeah. So we'll work with other communities to assist uh, Fall River when they have a disaster. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's, it's a great resource to have. And yes. you know, I've always um, had a good partnership with MEMA and with yes. us coordinators because um, if I needed to pull the trigger on something, I would just call them, like mm -hmm. Nate. I've asked Nate many, many things. Yep. And he's always been accommodating. Um, and, and that's what we're here for. Right. And that's the reason we have local coordinators. Mm -hmm. Our local coordinators are each assigned roughly 30 cities and towns apiece. And they're your conduit to the state. Right. And he's, like I say, um, they're a great asset. And all the coordinators that I have worked with over the many years I've been doing this, they all have been cordial, all been very helpful. Um, and, you know, it, it's good to have that relationship because, once again, not to be repetitious, once you build that bond between people, pick up the phone, and right. they're going to be more will, will, willing and eager to help you. Absolutely. Rather than not knowing who's this guy calling. Right. And I think that's what's important, um, to build a relationship. That's what emergency management is. It's it relationships. Is. It's relationships yes. between, and, and you know, we, we have the um, Southeast Mass Directors Association. You've heard of that yes. group. Yep. It's a very active group. Mm -hmm. And we meet once a month. and. We discuss issues within the area. We discuss helping each other. Um, and it, it's a great group amongst us. As a matter of fact, that's been around now, I want to say near 25 years. I think uh, myself, Bill Tanzi, Eddie Pimentel, old names, 
Um, I remember some of those. Huh? Um, started all of this way back in the day. And it's been something helpful for the new guys that come in as EMDs because they always come to us for advice. What can we do with this? What can we do with that? Mm -hmm. And it's just like when you look at the, um, if we have to communicate to you rather than computer and phone, we go on the Web EOC. Yep. And the Web EOC, um, if we have a disaster within Fall River, we just tell them what's happening um, within the city, if we need resources, and that's documented. Yes. So I think also, you can speak on that a little bit, you also monitor, monitor that and say, well, four of us are in big trouble here, let's get, get a hold of them. And Nate has done that for me. Yeah, so WebEOC is our operating platform, mm -hmm. and within there, there's a situation board where any community can put in uh, information if they're having an event. It might even be something um, that's not a big disaster, maybe it's a, a hazmat issue on a roadway, uh, but we can monitor all of that and we can see what you have going on within your community. And on top of that, there's other uh, what we call boards in there. Um, and those boards will have information such as shelters that's open, what the capacity is. Uh, we'll look at things like a resource requests. So if our river needs a resource, rather than having 351 cities and towns calling us at once, you put it in through Web EOC. Um, then it gets filtered to the regional office, and for you it would be Franklin. Mm -hmm. And so we review it in Franklin, and we fill it, if we can, within the region. If we can't fill it within the region, if it's beyond the capacity of what we have within the region, it goes up to our state headquarters, which is the Framingham Bunker. And then they will fill it from there. And if for some reason that we can't fill it statewide, then it gets kicked up to either an EMAC request, which is the Emergency Management Assistance Compact, or it gets kicked up to FEMA. Yeah, I know, because many times when we do use the um, Web OC, I'll send Nate an email as well. Hey, Nate, we have this open, the shelter's open, follow up on it. Right. And he always calls me. Do we need, you need anything, you need any help from us? So uh, MEMA is very um, efficient and good at that. Yeah, it's one of the, the things we up. try to do yeah. uh, when we know there's a disaster happening. We want to make sure the communities, we know you're really busy mm -hmm. and you may not have time to pick up the phone and call us or to even put an entry into Web EOC, so we'll reach out to you. Um, and as we said earlier, the relationships are the key. Mm. And you know, you and Nate having a good relationship or, or you and I you know, working together like this, this is how we get things done get and things we get done. it done efficiently. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and I think that's what's in the, it's, it's in pub, we're all public safety. Mm. That's it. And you know, when you look at fire, police, EMA, uh, we're doing the same thing for the citizens of our city, my city. Yes. And um, it's always good to, to call on MEMA when I need your help, which I have many, many times, <laughs> trust me. Because um, you know, we have the, we have, we're a city, we have the resources, and we also have an agreement with all the towns around us, Somerset, mm -hmm. you know, Chief Barrows will call me all the time, we should do with this. You know, we have a new EMD in Westport now. Right. And as we all know, most of the EMDs are fire chiefs, mm -hmm. and they have a deputy or a coordinator. And sometimes, being in the role of the fire chief at EMD, it can be stressful, it's a lot of work, and that's why if you have an assistant to help them, and they usually call me um, and say, hey, what, what about this, what about that? And you know, I, I try to help them, and if I can't give them the answer, I say, call MEMA, yeah. and uh, MEMA will help them. So we touched on the East Sun plan a little bit. Yes. And I think, I look at it as being the Bible for Fall River. You know, I, I would tend to agree with that. Yeah. It, it's a 10,000 foot overview plan that talks about all of the important categories in emergency management. Right. So it starts out, uh, if you look at a plan, it'll start out with a description of the community. It'll talk a little bit about your elevation, your population, uh, what languages are spoken here. Now somebody may be saying, you know, why do we care about what language is or uh, what the percentage of the population is, you know, in different age groups. But there's, that helps us decide how to push messages out. You know, for example, if you have a population that is 25% Hispanic speaking, we need to know that so when we put out messages, we can also put it out in Spanish so that everybody can get it. You know, and the other end of it is you'll see um, what is the population, how many people are, um, you know, under 18, 18 to 24, et cetera, that also assist us with how to put out messaging. Should we put it out, um, you know, through social media, television, et cetera? There's a lot of ways that messaging can be put out during a disaster. Yeah, particularly for we have a 
um, diverse. We have Portuguese, Spanish, Creole. We have a lot of different different languages in, right. in the city. And um, when we have to pump out a message, um, it, it, well, we have social media such as this, mm -hmm. um, local radio stations. But I think it, it's important that you have to speak to the people in their own language to understand okay. it. That's and um, just like the hearing impaired or sight impaired, you know, you have to do the slang language and yeah. hearing impaired. Sight repair, that's a little more difficult unless mm -hmm. they have the teletype that they can get the message from. But um, we, we, do, we try to do a good job at that. Yeah. Um, and I understand what that, those numbers mean in the book. Um, but there's so much other stuff in that book. Oh, the, yeah. And, and, you know, we uh, went along the same categories about what we just spoke about. We do have a um, number of people with access and functional needs listed there. Mm -hmm. So we, we'd like to know how many people are, mo are mobility impaired, visually impaired, et cetera. Because, again, that helps you with your planning if you need to do rescues, et cetera. But even as you filter down through there, there's information about mutual aid. There's information about your emergency operations center. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you know anybody can come in, pick that Bible, as you call it, up, and know about the community. They know what capabilities you have, what capabilities you lack by looking at that. And so it's that 10,000-foot overview. And then in the back of it, uh, we're in the process now of working on annexes that will supplement the information inside. So inside, you might get a paragraph or a snippet about evacuations. There'll be an annex that explains how to do the evacuations, uh, what, what roadways are uh, the primary roadways in um, Fall River and what secondary roadways, so you know which are your exit outs, et cetera. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I think that's, you know, to do, to have a good ESEM plan, that stuff is all in it. Um, but once again, you have to know where it is. Yes. Because uh, my ESEM plan book, it's like, you know, and Nate said, I never seen anything so elaborate as this. <laughs> but I, I covered all, all angles of it. And um, I said, I know where it is because I, you know, I dumped through it and I have it marked off where certain things are. And um, I think it's important. You know, when I first mentioned about the Bible, I mentioned to the mayor, I said, it's the Easter plan. So what's that? I said, it's the Bible for Fall River. It's like having different gospels and readings. <laughs> <laughs> you, you understood that. You understood that, yeah. You, know, you go to that particular page. And that's the, that's the gospel on evacuations. And yes, the, the next exactly. chapter will be another. And yep. he said, oh, that, that is actually the gospel. I said, no, 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 it's not the yep. gospel. But it, no, I try to explain it to him that way. But, but it's designed, too, that if, example, you're on vacation. Maybe you're out in Florida yeah. relaxing for a week and an incident happens. Somebody can pick that up and they have that information readily available that's going to help them respond to that yeah, disaster. And, and my deputy director, I have um, three deputy directors, my senior deputy, my next guy in charge for me um, as deputy director, um, he knows that in book inside and out as well. Mm -hmm. And I make sure he knows that. Yes. He knows all the contacts. He, matter of fact, he has your number. He has everyone's number. Good. Um, if I'm away, then you're the EMD. You're taking my place. So you have to be prepared if something should happen. That's right. So he is very much prepared. And that's one mistake a lot of uh, communities will make, is that they'll write the SEMP, but they don't socialize the SEMP. And in other words, your police chief should know about it, your fire chief should know about it, your deputy EMDs, your right. town administration, everybody should know the contents of that. So they all pretty much have a copy of it, right? but how many times do they actually open it and look at it? <laughs> and I think, in reality, I think that's the problem. Right. You're given the book. And they said, okay. I said, no, here, sign. You've got to sign that you received it, right? And um, they put it on the shelf. It collects dust. Uh, unfortunately, I think I'm speaking for a lot of EMDs that give it to the police, the fire chiefs, public works director, health director. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of them ever look at it, but eh, it is what it is. I think uh, in an emergency, they will look at it. <laughs> I, I hope. So we just touched on an EOC a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and I do, you know, modern age, we used to have an EOC with all department heads going down to the EOC. Matter of fact, there's a fire headquarters where you were. We have mm -hmm. everything set up. We can set up the tables, the, um, the name plates and everything. But when I look at that now, when I, if we, we're going to have a situation within the city, and I call for department heads to come down to the um, EOC, oh, if you need me, just get me on my computer. If you need me, just send me a text. If anything's going wrong, 
um, we all know about it. We have radio communication. I said, yeah, but that's not how it works. We all have to be at the same place at the same time to coordinate these efforts. Right. And I think a lot of cities and towns face the same situation as we face. Now, MEMA is a different story because MEMA is well structured with that, right. with your EOC. Um, but I think to get all the department heads together with all these modern devices that we have now, it's difficult. Do you run across that too, Mr. Phillips? Uh, yeah, we do up to a point. Mm -hmm. um, I do see that in uh, a lot of the bigger cities. Uh, mm. Example, Boston. They do a lot of uh, bring some in uh, in person and bring some in virtually. Yeah. So that, that does happen. Um, but for the most part, um, a lot of uh, folks understand the concept of the EOC. And by the way, that EOC, for those people that don't know, is Emergency Operations right. Center. Um, and that's where the coordination is done, not the tactical work out in the field but the coordination for resources, information sharing, et cetera, is all done through your emergency operations center. Um, on the state level, we have, as I said before, we have three regional offices. We have one in Tewksbury, one in Agawam, and Franklin. And then we have our headquarters uh, in Framingham, which is the underground bunker that people like to say, the bunker. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have that out in uh, Framingham. And when we have a big event, We'll stand it up with all of our different sections, our operations, planning, uh, finance, and admin, um, and um, logistics. And then underneath those, we filter in what we call ESFs, or emergency support functions. And those emergency support functions are uh, the folks that we rely on for uh, problem solving, decision making, and resource support, as well as information. So, you know, we, we example Mass Highway, which is uh, our ESF one. Um, they'll handle any issues that come up with the roadways. 2000, we had a uh, major fire in the city. We down at Fall Winds. Mm -hmm. um, the, the entire complex burnt down. We had 100 displaced families. We had two loss of lives. And, you know, w when I was looking at just assessing this, first call I made was to Mima. Mm -hmm. And I said, I need your help. Um, we have a major disaster here. And then... Um, once me was notified, they came down and we worked at Red, Red Cross mm -hmm. and we had every agency you can think of from social security to licensing, right. to, um, you name it, they were all there and there was effort for MEMA and the Red Cross that actually coordinate that with me to help me with that. Mm -hmm. So MEMA is a great resource to have and people don't realize that. So um, Chief, that what you're speaking of is what we refer to as a resource recovery or a recovery right. resource center. Yeah. And that's where we bring in different entities to help right. the citizens recover from we, that. From that disaster. So whether it's uh, the uh, Registry of Motor Vehicle, the Red Cross, local charitable organizations, uh, we'll bring them all together. Right. And so somebody that's been affected by that fire they don't have to go to you know, 10, 15 different um, agencies or departments to uh, restore their documentation and stuff. They can just come to one center. Everything's done right there for them that day. Yeah, we did that at Government Center, and yes. we coordinated that, and it was a, a great, great resource um, that we um, had for MEMA to work that. So before we, clo we close, um, let's talk a little bit about the EMPG grant for all these towns and cities that actually these little towns depend on that money. Yes, they do, yep. And I depend on it as well, <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, so the EMPG is our Emergency Management Performance Grant. And what that does is it allows a city or a town to uh, supplement or assist with running their EMD, or their Emergency Management Program. Uh, it is a match grant in that we look for the community to match whatever amount they um, receive, but those matches can come in what we call soft matches. Mm -hmm. So things like uh, an EMD salary, um, um, your CAD system, or uh, your code red, or whatever public notification system you have, they, those all qualify as matches. So it's easy to meet the match without yeah. putting out any cash, but it allows you to do things um, and to purchase equipment and things you need to run emergency management. And I'll tell you, um, all the MPG grants I have received over the years, I think I probably received somewhere around forty, four hundred, forty, four hundred thousand dollars. I think somewhere around there, and I put it to good use for my group, my agency. Mm -hmm. um, some departments will probably grab it; these small departments, uh, but 
I've always had the um, opportunity to use up my own money to an EPG grant for my organization, which is good. Because mm -hmm. um, that's how I buy equipment, buy stuff for my people. And, um, you know, I also use my office supplies and stuff like as a match as well. Yep. To Absolutely. run emergency management. Yep. And um, I always, always come up with the, the right amount. And the other thing that I also use is if we're doing volunteer work like doing lighting and generating Generator power. I keep the hours because I think we get thirty nine nineteen now an hour per yeah. hour, and I keep all those things, and I use that match as well. Right. So that's an easy match to use, mm -hmm. rather than I know one time way back in the day we had to use the fire chief, we had to use the police chief to try to get to the threshold. Try to get to that amount. To get yeah. to that, but it's a little easier now. Yeah, it and, makes and just you brought up a great point on tracking volunteer hours mm -hmm. because there is a dollar value associated with that if you declare a disaster yeah but even if you don't for matching grants it, it's critical yeah and that's what I do and, and and I keep track of all that which I can show when we get back to the office I keep track of all that stuff so and I apply that TMB grant grant and every time I have a question I call Lori mm -hmm. and she's wonderful Lori yes she is and um, Lori said oh yeah that's okay don't worry about it you know you can use mm -hmm. that and uh, she's been a great um, help to me as well. And I have to say this, um, over the years, I mean, I think everyone at um, MEMA Region 2, particularly that's who I deal with, has been cordial, polite, helpful, and um, it's a great resource that I can actually say on my part. And, um, and I appreciate you coming down here. Oh, absolutely. Justin in the background there, <laughs> the PO guy. Um, I appreciate you guys coming down to explain a little bit to four other people um, what uh, Emergency management all about. Oh, no problem. Happy so Mr. to do it. Mr. Phillips, I, I thank you very much for coming down. Oh, thank you. And I hope we can meet again. Thank you. Hopefully it's not during a disaster. No, absolutely not. <laughs> thank you.